This video will discuss the Title IV Part A needs assessment and the documentation that is required. In ESEA Section 4106D, districts that receive $30,000 or more in funds are required to conduct a comprehensive needs assessment at least once every three years to evaluate the district's needs in student access to well-rounded educational opportunities, learning conditions that cultivate a safe and healthy learning environment, and professional learning in using and maximizing while enhancing any educational technology. There are some things we look for when reviewing the needs assessment. We look at the needs assessment. This is the foundation for the application. The program description and the budget build off the needs assessment that has been identified by the district. Some reasons the needs assessment may be returned is because vague information and a lack of district data for the area targeted in the application. Perhaps the information is unclear or the data is too old. It's past the three year requirement. Or perhaps the dates are not within the relevant time frame. What we are looking for when reviewing an application is for a concise summary of the needs to include the data in the needs assessment section of the application. And the district will just want to maintain the documentation of the needs assessment in case you have a monitoring visit. And this documentation may include meeting minutes, sign-in sheets, and agendas where the needs were discussed. Districts will want to make sure the activities align and focus on getting to the potential root cause of an identified need. Also remember, that any activity must be supplemental and nothing that is required by state or federal laws. You can ask yourself, would this activity not exist without Title IV Part A funding? This is a screenshot of the GMAP Needs Assessment page. Once you've gone through the process of identifying your needs in the three content areas in the grant, you'll want to complete a summary of the information in the GMAP application. In accordance with ESEA Section 4106D, a needs assessment must be conducted at least once every three years. In the application, you must include the date of the assessment and the date must be within three years of the date of the application submission. This means either the day of the data was reviewed and collected, the day the assessment was conducted, or the district received the assessment report. If the district is using a Kentucky Center for School Safety Assessment, it could be the date the assessment was conducted. If the district survey teachers on their professional development needs around using educational technology, it would be the date the district met to analyze the data and the survey information and identify the needs. Many districts use the CDIP as the Comprehensive Needs Assessment. Since the CDIP may not capture areas like student mental health and safety, we allow districts to use other comprehensive assessments 
the districts you can use to collect the data and the information on the needs in those other areas. So the Kentucky Center for School Safety Assessment or other needs that best reflect a comprehensive view of the area of the grant. Next, the district needs to describe the results of the needs assessment. We want a narrative that describes the data that's been analyzed and needs that were identified. Unique district data is needed in the box to show that the district did look at the needs and showed an area that needs some improvement. This would not be general data or information, but really looking at your school and district data, your stakeholder input, any survey information, and other information that may have been used in order to develop the plan. This flowchart demonstrates how the needs assessment process should go when evaluating needs and determining how to best utilize funds. The district will review available data like surveys and available services, then look at the needs or challenges related to Title IV Part A allowable activities like programs or resources. This could be data the district has already obtained. Next, explore some best practices to address the needs and challenges that have been identified. Then select an intervention or activity to address the identified need. And finally, leveraging funding. And then explore any partnerships with outside agencies. Stakeholders should be included throughout this process. If you are having meetings to review this data and information, please document those meetings with a sign-in sheet, agenda, and meeting minutes. Once you have gone through identifying the needs, and gone through the process to determine challenges and available resources, then you will look at what inputs and activities that will address the need and may be supported with Title IV Part A funds. You will want to think about the goal or outcome of implementing the activity. What are the outputs? the intermediate outcomes, and then the long-term outcomes. When thinking through the outcomes, the district will want to look at their plan for assessing the program for effectiveness with the outcomes in mind. Even if the district does not complete a con uh, comprehensive needs assessment because they receive less than $30,000, the district should still determine what the outcomes for implementing the Title IV Part A program and how they plan to evaluate the effectiveness of the program. Next, we're going to look at the Supplement Not Supplant provision. This means that in general, districts may not use their program funds for the cost of activities in the three program areas of well-rounded education, safe and healthy students, and effective use of technology if the cost of those activities would have otherwise been paid with state or local funds in the absence of the Title IV program funds. Program, uh, funds also cannot be used to cover anything of the cost that is considered part of normal district function. Federal funds are always supplemental and should be used to addre address identified needs to add additional support, training, programs, and activities. 
This also means that if one district is utilizing their local funds for an activity that would typically be allowed under Title IV Part A, they cannot now switch to paying for that activity with federal funds because they are available. Example, a school resource officer that is paid out of state or local funds, they cannot now be paid out of Title IV funds just because those funds are now available. Software or curriculum that had been purchased for one school from general funds, then they cannot be paid for out of federal funds because the question may be, why isn't the district utilizing the original funding source? Why are you not using that original funding source since it was paid from the other source? Has there been a reduction in the fund source? All of this information would need to be documented in board meetings, showing that the funds were indeed reduced. Here is a general list of allowable and unallowable activities Title IV Part A can support, as well as good things to remember when discussing the needs with your district team and stakeholders. For example, salaries can be an allowable expenditure, provided that the position is directly correlated to an identified need and that there is not a supplanting issue. Recently, we received updated guidance regarding salaries associated with school resource officers. If this has been a previous need supported by Title IV Part A, that position can continue to be supported. However, if the district determines the need for a school resource officer which has not been previously identified, Title IV could not support this activity as it would be supplanting as passed by House Bill 63, and that would be required by the district. It is extremely important to maintain all documentation for all of your meetings, activity evaluations, time and effort, needs assessment, stakeholder consultation. If your district is selected for consolidated monitoring, having organized documentation can help streamline the process and as well as streamline it for the district as well. There should be specific documentation for all meetings, and it's a good idea to keep a sign-in sheet for the meetings as well as agenda and the meeting minutes. If at any time you have any questions regarding the needs assessment, please feel free to reach out to us anytime. You can reach out to Layla Brewer or Lee Bowling at any time. We are always happy to assist you with your questions.